Hi, this is a video about relative motion. Um, I've aimed it for AQA Mechanics 3, but it could be um, used for anybody who's, who's interested in relative motion. I'm particularly going to focus on um, the closest distance um, in this video. Right, um, I'm going to go through a couple of examples. So in this, this video, we're going to have a look at example 1. At a particular instant, two ships P and Q are 5 metres apart, there's P, there's Q, 5 metres apart, um, and they move with constant speeds and directions as shown in the diagram. So the velocity of P is 10 kilometres per hour, um, making an angle of 30 degrees, and um, the velocity of Q is 8 kilometres per hour, um, making this angle of 60 degrees here. Um, there's three things we want to find. The first thing is to find the speed and direction of P relative to Q. So that's what P appears to be doing um, to Q as an observer. The second thing we're going to try and find is the distance apart in metres when P is due south of Q. Um, and finally we're going to see if we can find the closest distance between them. So as P and Q are travelling um, there will be a particular point where they're closest together and we want to find what that distance is. Right, so um, we're going to break this first part into um, some steps. So our first step here is to draw a line. So we just want to draw a line um, that's pretty arbitrary, the line. Um, this is just going to help us um, to find um, the speed and direction of P relative to Q. So from a particular point on our line, we're going to um, draw the velocity of P. So over here I've now got the velocity of P and I know that it makes a 30 degree angle to this line over here and it's going at 10 kilometers per hour. Okay I'm now also going to draw the velocity of Q coming from the same point. Okay so all of this is just to help us draw um, this velocity triangle that we want. So um, we've got 60 degrees and we've got 8 kilometers per hour here. We're now going to draw the velocity of P relative to Q. So remember the velocity of P relative to Q um, is going to be the velocity of P. I'll just drop that down over here. It's going to be the velocity of P take away the velocity of Q. Okay, so velocity of P take away velocity of Q. So if I draw that onto my diagram, it's going to look like this here. Okay, and we can just double check um, the velocity of P relative to Q. That means I go negative Q, the opposite direction of Q, and the positive direction of P. Right. Now, one of the things that we're unsure about here um, that you might just want to check is that um, we don't know whether this is going in this direction here. It may be that it's going in that direction there. So I've just kind of done this from my knowledge. Um, if you wanted to check, um, what you could do is find um, this distance here by using trigonometry. So we could do um, 8 sine 60 and we can compare that to this distance here which would be 10 sine 30 and 8 sine 60 is actually bigger than 10 sine 30 because 10 sine 30 is just 5 and, and this is 4 root 2 and um, so this is going to be going in this direction here okay so um, our next step is to find the magnitude and the direction of this now one of the things you may have spotted already is that what we have here is in fact a um, if that's 60 that's 30 this must be a right angle here okay um, so that's going to be 90 degrees and the three of these sum to 180 now um, in order to find the magnitude here well in this particular case I can just use Pythagoras so um, I know that the magnitude is going to be equal to and it's going to be the square root of 8 squared plus 10 squared which is 164 okay and that works out to be um, square root of 164 and we've got 12.8 so over here I can put down um, 12.8 
12, wait, 8. Right, um, <coughs> sorry, 12.8 um, kilometers per hour, that should be. Right, okay, so um, that tells us the, the speed um, that it's traveling. We also want to know the direction, and we're going to give this as a bearing. Now, um, what we need to do here is um, we're trying to work out we're trying to work out this angle um, here. So the angle from the north um, going round here. So if I just draw in a a line that's going to be perpendicular to the line that we started with over here um, the information we now know is that this whole hang angle here is 60 degrees okay so this angle here is 60 degrees we need to know what this angle here is um, and that should help me work out this angle here which will then help me work out the bearing because I can add 90 to it so this angle here first of all um, is going to be well because we've got a right angle triangle, triangle again, that's going to be useful. I can do um, clear that. Right, so we want to find the inverse tan of the opposite divided by the adjacent, which is 10 um, divided by 8. Um, and that should give us um, this angle here which works out to be 51.3 degrees so we've got 51.3 degrees here okay so that tells me well this whole angle has to be 60 because um, we've got a set of parallel lines here um, so that means that this angle here is going to be 60 take away 51.3 degrees um, which is going to be 8.7 so this angle here is going to be 8.7 degrees and because this angle here is 90 um, I can do 90 plus 8.7 um, which is going to give me 98.7 degrees so to the nearest degree that's going to be um, 99 degrees so remember this is a bearing so our bearing is going to be 099 um, degrees Okay, so for um, part um, A, we needed this velocity triangle over here. Now for part B, because we're trying to find the distance apart, we need to go back to finding a distance diagram. But we want to represent um, our velocity of P relative to Q on our distance diagram. So we'll have a look at doing that now. So um, this is what we're trying to solve here. We're trying to find the distance apart in metres when P is due south of Q. So our first thing here is to draw a distance diagram. So we can start off just by drawing a line that represents our point P, point Q, five kilometers apart, like we've got here. Okay, we're now going to draw the velocity of P relative to Q from point P. So I'm gonna stick that on here. So um, we got this from our diagram over here when we knew that was 8.7 degrees and um, this was our um, magnitude 12.8 kilometers per hour and um, so we've now just translated that onto this diagram over here now we've drawn it from P um, because we want to know where P is relative to the observer Q so to start with um, we know that P is um, five kilometers west of, of um, Q and as time goes on as this, is, as this is moving we can see that the position of P relative to Q is, is going to be constantly changing um, and what we're looking for is when the position of P relative to Q is directly south so it's exactly in this direction over here so I'm now going to draw a south line which is going to be there okay so we're looking for this point here when our um, our um, boat P um, appears to be south of Q. 
lower of that dip will be south of Q. Okay, so um, what we now need to do is we need to use trigonometry to work out the distance um, when P is south of Q. So because I know that this, this is the distance diagram here and I've got my um, uh, right angle over here and I've got this side here which is adjacent to the 8.7 degrees and I've got this side here which is opposite to the 8.7 degrees I should be able to um, work out what this distance here is going to be using trigonometry okay so um, if I call this side x then this is going to be um, my opposite and adjacent so I'm going to have um, x is going to be equal to 5 times tan of 8.7 degrees okay so um, that tells me that um, we can do 5 tan uh, 8.7 and we're going to get 0 0.765 kilometers so that tells me x is going to be equal to 0, 0 0.765 kilometers okay so that tells me the distance apart they are when p um, is due south of q Okay, the next thing here that I want to work out is the closest distance between them. Okay, so um, at this particular point, it's 0 0.765 kilometers. But if we ever think, um, what's going to happen is, well, as, as um, time goes on, then the distance between P and Q is just going to continue increasing. Um, and what we want to know now is when or where um, does it occur that the that there is a, a closest point between them um, and then we can work out what that closest distance is so um, when they're closest together will be when um, we have a you might be able to spot this where um, this the, um, velocity of p relative to q is perpendicular um, to q here so where it appears like this here so for the observer Q this is when it's going to um, be closest um, this is when P is going to be closest to it so um, well if we now have a look we've got another right angle triangle this time our five kilometers is going to be um, our hypotenuse side that's now going to be the longest side um, so what we want to do now is we want to work out what this distance here is um, so I'll call this distance here y okay and y is going to be our closest distance so um, using trigonometry now we've got our opposite and our hypotenuse side um, so we can say um, our y is going to be equal to and it's going to be 5 times the sine of 8.7 degrees okay so um, again if we grab our calculator we'll do 5 sine of 8.7 and that tells us that it's going to be 0 0.756 so y is going to be equal to 0 0.756 kilometers. Okay, so that's going to be 756 meters away. And that's when they're going to be, that's going to be the closest distance between them um, over the whole journey. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Thanks for joining me.